have a look at maximum prices today. So we're going to look at the definition. I'll explain what happens to the price and what happens to the demand and supply. And then we're going to look at the diagram and some of the costs and the benefits. Here I have a definition. It's a legal requirement for firms to, at the most, charge this price. They don't want to charge anything higher than this price for the goods that are impacted by the legislation. So not everything will have a maximum price, only what the government wants to impose on that. And a really tricky thing to remember under time conditions is maximum prices have to be set below the market price for that to change behavior. So firms have to be forced to lower their prices and lower prices are going to affect supply. They're going to contract supply specifically because a lower price demotivates them and just makes it more, more difficult to cover costs. At the same time, the lower price is going to cause a movement down the demand curve. It's going to cause an expansion because for, uh, the consumers can better afford it. They might buy this good instead of substitutes and they might just see it more worthwhile to buy now that the price is cheaper. So the reasons for these are your income effect, your substitution effect and your diminishing marginal utility all working together to cause that expansion. And again, a maximum price doesn't shift anything because ultimately it's just a change in the price. So here's the summary. Save this, write this down. That's what we've just discussed. Okay, so let's look at the graph. A maximum price graph, remember it has to be set below the equilibrium price. And right now the equilibrium price is three. And here I decided to use, we'll set a price of one. That's the new maximum price. And I'm just going to draw some sketch lines to illustrate that's the maximum price. Some people draw solid lines. I prefer drawing sketch lines because there's no curve here. I'm just illustrating that that's kind of where the, the legal requirement is. In other words, prices with this maximum price, prices change downwards. So there's no shift. It's just going to be a movement. And we've talked about how there's going to be a contraction in the supply. That's the contraction. And at the same time, there's going to be an expansion in the demand. It's going to be those movements along because of what we've just discussed. Now, how do you find the exact price and quantity that now is supplied and demanded. We want to follow these rules. To find the quantity supplied, just go across from the current price, P max, and find the supply curve. That dot there, that's going to correspond to the quantity that is supplied. In this case, it's just one. And then you do the same for the demand. You go across from the current price to the demand curve. So go across from P max and find the demand curve that would be there. And this is the quantity that consumers want. And they want to buy a lot of this good because it's uh, really cheap. So, and, and they think it's worthwhile to buy. But firms at the same time, they're thinking, I don't really want to supply it because it's really expensive. It's a lot of costs and I can't really make a profit on it. So in other words, we have a difference between the supply and the demand. Specifically, we've got the quantity supplied being lower than the quantity demanded. And the difference here is actually four units. So QD minus QS is equal to four units. This is what we call the excess demand quantity. Some people like to label the excess demand quantity, which is four, as uh, this bit here. Or well, some people, I don't know, they draw some brackets and they just label that as the excess demand. So long as it's a quantity and not an area, then that represents the excess quantity that is demanded. People want five units, but they can only get one unit. So there's people that can't buy this product. So in terms of a summary, 
what's going to happen to firms? Firms face a problem. Their revenue is going to fall. So for those of you to find revenue, all you need to do is multiply the price times the quantity sold. So originally the price that the firm sold was three and these guys had sold three units before. That was the original revenue. Imagine they come that pink, pink area. And now that the maximum price has been set, only one unit is going to be sold because only one unit is available to be supplied. This is the quantity that's been sold. And they're just selling this for one. So their revenue is really small now. It's one height, one across that little box. So that revenue has really, really, really decreased from the pink area to the small blue area. And that's going to infect, affect the firm today. Later on, they're not going to be able to invest and they won't maybe have as high of a quality of a product. Okay, but possibly one benefit is now they've got a lot of choice of customers. So we have five people applying, trying to get this product, which is more than before. And maybe that gives the firm more choice in the context of university students, for example, to pick the ones that suit them best. They've got more of a choice that they didn't have before. Possibly that's a benefit. Okay, but let's see what happens with consumers. So consumers, we've talked about how there's more people wanting the good than can actually buy it. We talked about how there's five people wanting the good, but only one people person being able to buy it. So in that case, a lot of people are disappointed. They try to apply and they can't find uh, this good. So there might be long waiting times. There could be lots of rejections and ultimately a maximum price. And this is really important to remember leads to less quantity being sold. The quantity sold right now is only Q2. So that's kind of odd because a maximum price decreases the price, but because it, you know, makes farms really demotivated, it actually ends up decreasing the quantity sold. A benefit to a consumer may be for the people who definitely couldn't afford it at price three. So there's some people here for the people who definitely were not able or willing to pay three. So these are units three, four, sorry, four and five for these people, they would have not had a chance at buying the good at three. But now that the good is priced at one, yes, there's a more competition to get that one unit but they have an improved chance at getting the good because now at least that, you know, they, they can afford it before they weren't willing or able to buy it. And now that it's cheaper, they have, they, they could. So those are the costs and the benefits of a maximum price. Uh, another problem of a maximum price is the possibility of corruption. So we've talked about how if a maximum price is imposed at price, one, there's going to be loads of demand. It's that much demand. There's five demand. And we've talked about how only one unit will be sold. So there's a really big problem because a lot of people can't access the good. And some of these people have a really high ability to buy the good. So if you look at the, pe the people between one and three, as an example, these people can't buy the good because only one was available, but these people were prepared to pay five and four above, you know, the price that the firm was, was, uh, charging before. So what could happen, unfortunately with, ma with maximum prices is not only does it lead to lower sales, but it could increase the risk of corruption as some cu customers try to offer firms higher prices for limited amount of the good that they're offering and the firm might want to supply it because they're not being offered a price of one anymore they could be offered a price of four or a price of of three and the firm is happy to sell it for those prices it's clearly illegal so they shouldn't be 
and they will get in trouble for this. But uh, in theory, the risk of corruption could be higher as wealthier customers or those that just can pay for, for it more and just want it more perhaps start to try and access the good that they can't with the maximum price. And here I'm just doing some maths to, to explain that uh, these customers that try and bid the price up illegally, they could actually make the company make kind of even more revenue. Uh, so it could even be in the firm's interest to, to do this. And remember we said that the maximum price might cause revenue to fall for the firms? Well, that might not be that true if there is a lot of corruption. So all in all, it's quite difficult to see what will happen with the maximum price, whether it's a good idea or not. If you want to impose a maximum price on university education, it sounds like a good idea at first because you're going to make things cheaper so you would think more people can afford it. But if companies start to restrict their supply, there'll be fewer people going to university and maybe there's an increased risk of corruption too. So uh, you've got the notes at the bottom and um, before we leave, remember rule two? Remember this is really well because this is a common trick that these multiple choice questions can play, which is if a maximum price is set above the current equilibrium, it's not going to change anything. So that is a trick. Okay, so I hope you found that video useful. Again, download the, the notes below and leave me a comment if you'd like any other videos. Okay, thank you very much. Bye.